As a young girl, it always felt like Lent was forever long due to changes in the winter season and the liturgical season. Lent always started in the deep, dark bitterness of winter. The sunless afternoon of Ash Wednesday was intensified by an empty stomach from sunny fasting all day and the anticipation of an awful fish dinner waiting for me at home. Then there were the changes in the liturgy that made mass seem to drag on forever. The penitential themes in the readings, singing the Kyrie as a dirge, these were all boring and felt like they extended mass again for forever long. The most notable to me though, was the absence of the Alleluia at the gospel acclamation. I miss singing out my gospel joy. Now, given what's going on in the church of late, it feels like she too is missing out on her gospel joy as she continues to navigate the dark waters of sexual abuse and most recently impacting women religious in India, Africa, Italy, and beyond just a few weeks back. It feels like no Alleluia is to be had. The church is stuck in the Lent of my youth. And I, like the church, was stuck in how I was going to enter Lent this season. And in conversations leading up to today with colleagues and Catholics and non-Catholics alike, it seemed like there was a polarity of action in a way to move forward. Some people said, abandon ship, just get out of the church. All that matters is your relationship with God. Others said, correct the culture now. It's about women's ordination, it's about allowing clergy to marry, and it's about the church re-examining her position on homosexuality. But in thinking about these actions for a way forward, it seems like they're subject inconsistency. To abandon ship means I abandon ship. And to correct the culture, well, that's universal. It requires a we, all of us as the body of Christ, to take action. And so, as I enter Lent today, I am feeling somewhat unstuck, which is a wonderful grace. And the reason I'm unstuck is because of how I've engaged with these readings. I've gained a better sense of understanding my individual and collective responsibility to church. And this approach, for me, allowing me to move into Lent with greater ease, centers on basics, vocation, and prayer. And in going back to basics, I remind myself that I am part of the church through the sacrament of my baptism and my own sinfulness. I'm not perfect, trust me, and neither is the church. So I, like the church, claim my sinfulness in Lent. And it's freeing for me to do so because the God of now desires me. We hear this from the prophet Joel, Return with all your heart to the Lord our God now. So yes, whatever is on your heart, be it institutional sin, personal sin, our hopes and our joys, return it to God with all your heart. It's a way to give yourself greater freedom and block, unblock yourself from whatever it is prohibiting you to have a fuller relationship. Joel reminds us that the onus isn't just on us as individuals. There's a collective responsibility, too, on the assembly as faithful participants in the church. So here's my second. I go back to my vocational understanding, and we hear this in the urgency of Joel. Call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation. We, the laity, the clergy, and religious are bound together by a common vocation in the assembly of God our church, in the solidarity of our sinfulness, and in the redemption of Christ Jesus. So as I enter into the nowness of Lent, with heavy, the heaviness of heart over this abuse crisis, I know I want to act. I know I'm tired of praying about this. I, like many others, have God-given talents that can procure change and positive impact. Give me five minutes in this house, and I'll clean it up. And as these statements have surfaced in prayer, as well as in conversation, I am reminded of just how human I am. I realize how attached I am to my desire to act. 
and not to pray. Seemingly for me, it feels like nothing has changed since Boston. And this, this sentiment reminds me of the message from our second reading today, to be reconciled for the greater glory to come, salvation. A wise Jesuit colleague said to me, if we're not going to pray about it, then we've missed the whole point of being in relationship with Christ. And so there it is, my third Lenten lesson from the gospel today and my third approach for entering into Lent more fuller. Paul's pray. In the solitude of prayer, I spend time with God that is not influenced by actions or the presence of others. I follow the gospel message offered by Jesus today and the example he provides throughout his ministry to withdraw and to pray. In doing so, I can access so much more of my emotion. I can access so much more of my realness and give to God a new sense of my entirety over this situation. I offer my hurt. I offer my tears. I offer the harder questions in prayer. And I offer my resentment, too. It's not easy for me to pray for those who procured these sinful and criminal acts and violated all sense of human dignity. But that's the human temptation. And that's exactly what I need to reconcile. I compare one's human condition with my own to arrive at my sinfulness is not as bad as theirs. It's a deflection. I didn't do this. Why should I have to pray about it? And regardless of how close or how far I sit from another sin, that sin still touches me and the bonds I share with the community called church. We are then a fractured church, individually and collectively. And so we must stand together united in this scandal. And I don't say that lightly as a way to placate the hurt and experiences of those victims of sexual clerical abuse. For most of us, the sins we are confronting in this scandal are not our own. As the church in this moment, we may feel the union of sin more than the redemptive power of grace of God. Yet it is that power and that grace that transforms us as individuals and as a community, helping us to reconcile our hurts through prayer. It is only by asking for grace that we can be led through these dark waters to a new moment of reconciliation, healing, and change. As members of the body of Christ, we can repair this fracture the scandal has broken open using prayer as a medium and starting point for what no doubt will be a long healing process. As I said, prayer is the opportunity to be in right relationship with God by offering our awe for grace to transform our awe. And so as I enter my 40-day journey of Lent, like many in the church, I am praying for a way forward. I am discerning a grace, grace-led and grace-filled pathway. Discernment does not mean slow or passive acting. It means deliberately prayerful and spirit-led listening and action so I can best serve Christ and our church as an individual and as a member of our great community.